Kevin O'Leary has made it official, having just announced his candidacy for the conservative leadership live on his Facebook page just moments ago. All right, he did it as just before he walked into the studio and sat down on this desk with us. So good morning, Mr. O'Leary. Can you repeat for us what you told the Facebook viewers? Well, I've started this journey really on social media about a year ago. Millions of Canadians have contacted me, and I'm enjoying a huge platform of social media in a way to talk to them about the problems we've got in this country. They've encouraged me to run, and I've decided to start it right now with you. This is, it starts right now. So you're in. I'm in. You're I'm in. in. Now I'm all in. You're so Arlene, the dragon you know is Kevin O'Leary, a former dragon of yours, uh, with you. Are you surprised to hear that he is uh, entering the leadership race? No, I wasn't surprised to hear he was entering the race. I mean, Kevin, as we all know, as all Canadians know, he's an opportunistic man, and he would have seen the opportunity to have even more fame and attention than he has already when uh, he stepped into the race. Mm. So you think that that's why he's in this, for the fame and for the attention? I think that's pretty typical of Kevin. His style is to make sure that he is front and center and getting attention, and he uses his persona to do that. So mm. I definitely think that that's a piece of it. You can't help as you watch Kevin O'Leary on Shark Tank and wonder, is this all an act? This bullying? It's, it's not an act. And, and I, I think of myself as the merchant of truth. I really do. I would listen. Um, one of the first questions I ever get asked when we talk about the show is whether Kevin is the same person off the show as he is on the show. The answer to that question is yes. And that should put enough fear into Canadians right there because he is not showing up as somebody different. That isn't just bluster for television. That isn't just his persona. That is who this man is. What you see is what you get. I've forgotten about this guy already. Bring on the next deal. I'm here to make money. Well, I really, really believe I am the merchant of truth. I didn't even know what fired meant. But within minutes, I was on my bicycle on my way home in utter shame, in shock that she had that kind of control over my life. It was stunning and powerful. I have never, ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's still pissing you off. I can't Is believe it. it. Changed my life forever. I have never, ever in my life worked for someone again, ever. No one has ever had control over me, ever, and never will. I work for Steve Jobs, and if you think I'm tough, you should have met him. Really? Oh my goodness. He, he berated me in a boardroom once in front of my own employees. He was vicious. Like worse than you on Shark Tank. I'm, I am a nothing burger compared to what he was. People say I'm mean, but I, I really believe this. I tell the truth. I really tell the truth. Yeah. I have never, ever in my life worked for someone again. Ever. No one has ever had control over me. Ever. And never will. I've also told the caucus privately, but I'll disclose to you now publicly, if I don't deliver a majority mandate to the Conservative Party, fire me. You know, let's, let's put some um, reality around this. So money does rule my life and I'm okay with it. I have found my inner peace. What do you want to do with your money? I want more inner peace. I'm a resident of Ontario. I can barely afford to eat. I pay tax to Kathleen Wynne then travel the world, which I do every year, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Zurich, Geneva, New York. Capitalism creates wealth, and those people pay taxes. Yes. 30 to 50 percent, depending where they are, and that goes back into the system to support all kinds of initiatives, including helping people that, that are in poverty. I blame governments around the world, because I'm agnostic. I've said to you many times, and you've agreed with me, that a third of tax dollars that come out of wealthy people's pockets are wasted by governments. My point is that wealthy people provide taxes at different tax rates all around the globe and we've seen tremendous success as a result of this system. Do you believe in a carbon tax? No, absolutely not. That's not what, when you do a carbon tax, you, you take money off the balance sheet of a company and you give it to the government where it is wasted. There's every evidence everywhere that what we do and what works in America. There is more proof that the majority of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. According to a new report by Bankrate.com, 63% of Americans do not have enough savings to pay for a $500 car repair or a $1,000 emergency room visit. There's every evidence everywhere that what we do and what works in America. In Canada, we force at least 20% equity most of the time in mortgages. Had they had that one rule in the U.S., they wouldn't be where they are today. Thank you, capitalism. Thank you. Let's celebrate what's working. And the metrics show us and the numbers show us that our system works. So let's not vilify it. Right. But how, 
How do we know the system works? Because look, look at what's happened. People don't have jobs. Well, I, I'll explain it to you this way. You enjoy one of the highest standards of living on earth, yeah. right in that chair you're sitting in. Yes. You're second to only one other country, Switzerland, and we're about to beat them soon. This country is on fire. Everything is working. Everybody around the globe wants to be a Canadian now. You walk outside of this country with a flag and they kiss your feet. Right. That's why it's working, George. Let's celebrate the facts, all right? The combined wealth, this is according to Oxfam, of the world's 85 richest people is equal to the 3.5 billion poorest people. It's fantastic. And this is a great thing because it inspires everybody, gets the motivation to look up to the 1% and say, I want to become one of those people. I'm going to fight hard to get up to the top. This is fantastic news. And of course I applaud it. What can be wrong with this? Really? Yes, really. So This is capitalism. Thank it again, Amanda. Salute it. Nobody Embrace is it. disputing it is fantastic. that capitalism is good. You know far from the truth that I would say there's anything wrong with capitalism. It has its flaws. But when it has worked for mankind, and there is, of course, this period where incomes actually went up, the middle class grew in America thanks to the New Deal, thanks to capitalism used wisely globally, in the hands globally. of good policy, when it works is when policy drives it. It doesn't drive itself. It's not a, it's not a driverless car. You actually need some thought around it. And you might be interested to know that places like China, in the Oxfam report, they talk about China, Pakistan, Nigeria, fast-growing economies where wealth is booming, the middle class is growing, the very thing you're talking about, the disparity is growing there too. So it isn't just a rising tide lifting all boats, it's lifting some at the top more. And the argument they're making is it's because of systemic issues, because the uber-rich, they don't pay taxes, first of all, you know that as well as I do, and second of all, they control the political process, and that's where corruption comes in, that's where you start to undermine democracy, and that's bad for you as well as anybody else. The uber-rich will not fare well, as they never have throughout history, when they start to undermine the systems that got them there in the first place. I can't agree with that at all. I'm not you going to blame the uber-rich. Look, don't tell me that you want to redistribute wealth again. That's never going to happen. All, okay? You know what? You take a simple stat like this, which is neither good nor bad. It's just a fact. It's a celebratory stat. I'm very excited about it. I'm wonderful to see it happen. The disparity is growing. So the fact that there are wealthy people, the Oxfam report actually makes the point that they're concerned there's something systemic about this. It's not that wealth is bad, it's not a zero-sum game, but that the disparity grows larger because the wealthy are controlling the systems, and that is the problem that we may need to address. You know, I'm very concerned when Oxfam focuses on one country like the United States. I think this is this a was global, global problem. Hey, this was a global okay. study. This is not and then, at all so one it's country. global, but here's the concern I have. If you want to incentivize people to create wealth and start businesses and take capital risk, you can't start telling them that you're going to somehow overtax them, like in France at now 78%, or redistribute their wealth after they've had the success of actually putting it together. I do want to address the redistribution thing, as you go right there every time, as though somehow there's this evil plan to take more money from the wealthy. And the truth of the matter is, Kevin, that the vast majority, when we talk about the 1% paying a disproportionate amount of tax, the 1% means doctors, lawyers, the upper middle middle class, the uber rich, the people on this list who, may, who have got billions, some of them pay no tax because of they're taking all of their, their, invest, their income as investment income. They have ways to get around the taxation system. You know that as well as I do, the same way corporations get around the tax system. That's the kind of problem that we're talking about, the systemic problem that keeps capital flowing in a tiny pool among the rich instead of down to workers in the form of higher wages or reinvesting Amanda. in new business. You are completely discounting the tremendous value, both socially and economically, they provide by creating the companies that made them rich. Millions of jobs is all the around of the world. Brunei? What and value is, is an look, oligarch in Russia? He is investing. What value is the Duke of Westminster? Amanda, These are the, not people who create wealth. Of course they're creating wealth. They're investing their money. They're investing their money because they want to make more money. Businesses. This isn't Bill Amanda, Gates. I want you to embrace capitalism for all the great things it's done in the last hundred years. And you can't deny the fact the world's a better place. Thank you, capitalism. Thank you, thank Here you, thank you. Here is the part you. where That's I exactly say to you matters. and every fringe member of the Tea Party, the fact that I see inequity, that I can read this Oxfam report and say there's something wrong and that we as thoughtful human beings in democratic nations can actually work to improve the system doesn't make me anti-capitalist, anti-market, anti-rich, anti-anything. It just means we can do better than we're doing and to deny that actually just puts you off 
offside permanently. You know what I hope happens, Amanda? Your son becomes a great capitalist, starts a business, becomes so thinking too. rich, but I hope he and lives takes in a world care where that of doesn't you. Make him a jerk. The only way to, to reverse this problem that the rate of capital grows faster, and incidentally, but who said it's a problem? Incidentally, he also reveals said it's a that the bigger the capital pool, the higher the return. So once you have a lot of money, you make ever more of it. Oh, that's and, horrible! And, well, what an awful outcome! What happens, My goodness, we should put those people in jail because they're successful entrepreneurs. They it, deserve it to be jailed. To starve the economy of growth. Oh, I, so I, they, imagine people getting rich from working hard. That would be a horrible place. He also raises that you'd be interested. You should read this book and take it to the cottage this summer. He raises the point that in the U.S., the one percent are from this new class of super managers, people who are just paid and excessive amounts. And we should amounts. punish them for their success. And when, no, when you well, first of all, there's no evidence that being paid that much makes their I think their performance sh- I agree better. With you. It, and secondly, is it capital punishment to bring one in? Should one, we kill them? There's a one-to-one correlation between lowering the top marginal tax rates and their salaries going okay. up. Okay, let, let me explain what so this idea has no you merit. You can say that right? inequality. It doesn't matter, but some of everybody the gra- else in the world thinks the it greatest- does. And there's no, uh, first of all, these, these, At what, these you debates decide how wealthy they would be? go better if people like you didn't get so upset about it. I'm very them. upset. Nobody's the idea steal is so foreign. Or kill and, anyone. And, it is and na- in fact, most of us actually really believe in wealth and entrepreneurship. No, no, but you said you need to limit it. There should be a cap what on it. What you need to do is make sure it's what are you being saying? shared. Make so sure it's there's being a, they, shared. People should, that kind of thinking is insane. But here's the real blame that I focus on. When you think about what really matters, and there's a very famous 1900 quote, it goes something like this. You feed a man a fish and you take care of him for a day. Teach him how to fish, you take care of him, take care of him for his life. When the bailouts came on the bubble burst, the bailouts didn't pay off anybody's mortgage. The bailouts paid off these bankers who continue to make great bonuses. And I have no problem with leaders, business leaders making tons of money. I'm cool with that, right? But the system, is designed for only a certain group of people to win. And I think what's interesting about Occupy Wall Street and that kind of stuff that's happening is people are waking up going, hey, how's about you? Because this isn't working. I I get that, but listen, first of all, I'm a big believer in freedom of speech for both sides, okay? If you want to go protest and complain, you better have a better idea. If you want to protest, Show me how you're going to help solve the problem. This is the start, though. This, this, this is, don't you think there's an argument to be made that this is the beginning of people? I think, I think the Seattle riots was the real beginning in, in, in this part of the world where you're starting to see people look and go, wait a minute. This doesn't work. And sometimes, you're right, it'd be great to find a way to put a new limb back on, but sometimes you have to stop the bleeding first. And everybody's looking like this Wall Street situation isn't going to get better. But George, you've got to remember something. The financial infrastructure of our whole economy and everything we do is the banking system. Yeah. If you rode here on a bicycle or you came in a Ferrari, you used a bank to get here because they funded the company that built yeah. those. They distribute the food we eat. You can't eviscerate the financial infrastructure. That makes no sense. No, I agree. You can be mad at a banker and there's always a bad apple somewhere, but the system works and we should protect it. When the bailouts came on the bubble burst, the bailouts didn't pay off anybody's mortgage. The bailouts paid off these bankers who continue to make great bonuses. But the system works and we should protect it. Thank you, capitalism. Thank you. That's what made that happen, all right? But now I want to speak to you directly and tell you what I've done this morning. Today it's official. This is my contract with the Conservative Party of Canada. I fill this out. In a few hours, one of my team members will fly to Ottawa and register this, and I will become an official member of people that are trying to become the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. Exactly that. Why am I doing this? They're pigs. Pigs get slaughtered. So now we should believe everything you say. I can afford to walk out of here if I want to and never come back, and there's nothing you can do about it.